Hey, welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan, and this is me going rogue today on the Kansas City Chiefs and how they might draft around the league in this week's mock draft. And I know you're saying, hey, I thought you weren't going to do one every week. Well, so many people have been asking me to continue to do these, to talk through the options and the way the scenarios might fall out. I figured I'd do another one. We're all sitting at home. I hope you guys are safe and well. We might as go through, uh, go through the options and take a look at them all. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Athletic Matrix, make sure you check that out too because a big part of this draft process is going to be the athleticism, more so than any other year that we can remember. So check that out at rogueapc.com and use the code RGR20 to get a couple of bucks off of it, about 25%. It's a great deal, and I think you guys are really going to dig it. I'm working away on the draft guide as well, and we're going to take a look at that here today pretty soon. If you're not a member of this channel yet, the memberships are coming. If you want to get here, get subbed. Click that sub button. Click the bell notification so you know when something happens. Leave your comment below about what you think they should have done, what they will do, etc. If the draft is even going to come off. And make sure you leave a thumbs up if you like this draft or you like this video. So, I'm going to start today and I'm going to switch it up. Everybody seemed to like the, the fan speak from last time because of the trade aspects. So, I'm going to go ahead and use that today and see where it can get us in terms of what this draft might look like. I do feel the longer that this goes on and that Chris Jones is on the roster currently under the tag, I do feel like they're continuing to work on it. Maybe that turns into uh, him playing in Kansas City this year, and so there won't be maybe those extra draft picks that we anticipated earlier on in the offseason. It's a very strange year, and there's no way to know. So we're going to act as though he's going to, and we're going to go through and we're going to see what else we can do by moving around this draft. So here we are. We're over on fanspeak.com, and this is their premium on the clock. I've been a member of this for quite a while, and that allows you to do the trades and the other advanced things that we're going to take a look at today. We're going to select the Chiefs here, move into that next window. Uh, if you like this, definitely check them out. Uh, it's a good product. It's been stable for many years. I'm going to put it at seven rounds just in case we trade all the way back out to the seventh. And when we get here, this is what I always do. Um, unless I'm doing an experiment for somebody in particular whose board I want to play with, but I always use the composite board because I think what it does is it represents the conglomeration of what all the different analysts that they use in their boards, and it represents how the teams do it too. Different teams have different boards based on their priorities, based on what they want to do, what their positions of need are, et cetera, et cetera. So I always like to do the composite board because I think it gives you a more even playing field about how the differences in opinion might come uh, to show up on draft day. So we'll go to the next one and move on. We'll use the same board. We're going to stay at classic. And we're going to use the user voted, I think, needs. I don't think it makes a big difference, but it's good to see there. Okay, seven rounds, big board. Here we go. Let's get started. And here we go. Looks like we have a couple of trade offers to take a look at. And first is the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not looking to move up to 25. The Chiefs are trying to add draft picks. We're not trying to spend less um, or, or have less to choose. So we're going to ignore uh, Minnesota. Thanks, but uh, we're going to pass on that. Now, the Carolina Panthers are kind of interesting. This is a trade uh, that fits the parameters that I've kind of outlined, and I think you guys have heard. The, the Chiefs need to get a high-quality player. You can get those at the top of the second, but you can't go too far. I don't think they can go past 42. That's number 10 in the second round. And this qualifies because this is a number six. Uh, we're going to be at 38 overall. That works, especially when you're gaining a top five pick in the third round as well. So given that that's the best offer on the table, we're going to take that, and we're going to run through this and let this first round fall as it will. And we're going to monitor. In the meantime, we're going to take a look at what the fans voted to be the priorities for uh, team needs. Uh, I don't agree that Ed should be the top. Then they have CB, uh, the defensive line, wide receiver, then running back and linebacker. I think linebacker's got to be way up here. Um, and I think O-line's got to be higher up there as well. Um, they have it as guard center or tackle. Okay, well, interior offensive lineman, I would call it, but... Uh, that's a look at what the fans had voted for this particular one. Let's review what happened in round one now that we're going at 38, six in the second round. Burrow goes, as we would think, Chase Young. This is pretty chalk so far. 
Justin Herbert to the Chargers. I talked about that on the Locked on Chiefs podcast yesterday. I do think that that is uh, something that could very well happen. Uh, the Chargers went Kinlaw first. That's interesting. Ruggs goes to the Jets, not to the Raiders or the Broncos. That's a nice thing to see. Um, let's see. Denzel Mims goes to the New Orleans Saints. Patrick Queen at 26. Uh, I thought he might be available here. We saw last week that he was. Then we get Christian Fulton. Uh, he is on the bottom of my round one guys. And as you see, the Panthers in the Chiefs' original spot at 32 took Trevon Diggs, who I think is at the top of the second tier of corners. You guys saw my review of him uh, on film the other week. If you haven't, go check that out as well. So that's where we're at. Uh, some interesting things happen here. I think we're going to have some options, though. So we're going to move on to the second round, where we're going to pick at 38, six overall. And what this has done right now is given us – an extra pick in the top 100. So instead of three selections, we're going to have uh, the sixth pick here, the 31st, as well as one at the top of the third round, and then our normal pick at 32. So we've gained a top 100 player is basically what it is. So we're going to let that start. We're going to see what happens here to kick off the second round. And that is with Pittman, Terrell Lewis, an edge guy, the safety McKinney, and then Ross Blacklock, a guy that has been uh, mocked to the Chiefs in some outstanding drafts before. So now we come to the question marks. Grant Delpit is uh, a dynamic uh, safety for LSU, one that I think is very much in the mold of what they want uh, to project as Tyron Matthew of, of the current roster over there. I don't think he's as good as Matthew was in college, but he does have that ability to play both some slot corner as well as free safety. He does a little bit of it all. He's an interesting guy. And at this pick at 38, I think that's better than I wouldn't have really wanted to go there at 32. Here it's a better option. A couple of running backs, A.J. Terrell and Jeff Gladney. We've talked about both of them before. And I think they are very much on the board here at six, and I think that's, that's worth it. Out of the two of them, I do have a couple of trepidations about both of them. I'm not super huge on either, but they are both in my second tier of corners. And so for the sake of argument, I'm going to go with Terrell today uh, based on length and size and see where that gets us. And as this continues to trip down, now they took uh, the cornerback off of the team needs at this point. Chase Claypool goes 40. That's really interesting. I don't think that's actually going to happen. I don't think he's moved up anywhere near like that just because of his combine. Bryce Hall was an option for us later in the draft. He goes at 21. Says so Ruiz. He's the best interior offensive lineman by uh, pretty much consensus across the board by a lot of different people. Um, we get uh, Oa Ibignagane. Uh, knows a guy that I would have considered here had he still been available. As well as Ben Barch, I think that's a little overreach for him. But what that leaves us with is a couple of options here. We have Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, who I don't think is really worth this pick. I think he's probably a third rounder. Um, I don't think I'd, I'd use a running back pick here anyway. There are bigger fish to fry. There is Malik Harrison, which is, I think, probably the number four linebacker on uh, my list, and we're here at 63 is the pick, so 66 is not uh, that much of a stretch. I like Lloyd Cushenberry, but I don't think he is worth this selection, quite frankly, um, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, we've addressed the corner right off the bat, so I don't feel like we have to double up here either. So what I'm going to end up doing is going with Malik Harrison, a guy that can play uh, at least two downs and probably three at the linebacker position and give them another option. We'll grab him here, and we're going to see what comes as we get into the next round. And we see that uh, Duggar went right after us. He might have been another option. He's a big athletic safety that I think might be a decent fit. And you never know what's going to go on there. Uh, they just have a safety group that I feel like the Chiefs are pretty comfortable with. So this is what we've done so far in the second round. A.J. Terrell, Malik Harrison. Two picks that address needs on the defense, they weren't reaches. They were right in the pocket with where they belong volume-wise, uh, rank-wise, and they will be on my big board in very similar positions uh, when it's all said and done, I believe. So now we take a look at what's coming. We have the third-round pick uh, starting at 5, and then we have, again, the last at 32. So we're going to launch this and see where we can get. 
And again, as we scroll down, we see Matabuke goes, Troutman goes, Cushenberry now goes a few picks later where he could have been another option for us. And I know a lot of you are first going to see Cam Akers being available and think that that's the way we got to go, right? I know a lot of you fans that live in Missouri are familiar with Jordan Elliott, and I think that's an interesting option for this team as well. Let's take a look at the entire list, knowing that we've gone and addressed the defense so we can look at an offensive player at this point in the draft here. And we want to make sure that we get value out of it. So, we have Curtis Weaver. I don't think that this is the right spot for him. I, I would think that he's a little bit farther down. Robert Hunt is a really interesting prospect at guard. Uh, and, and I do like the way that he plays. He might be able to address some of the issues there. And I just don't feel that, although I like Cam Akers a lot, he's one of my favorite backs in this draft, I don't feel like this point at 69 is the right spot to take him. So I'm going to go down just a little bit farther. And it's really right now between Jordan Elliott of Missouri and Robert Hunt. Uh, you see Hennessy's there. He's a center that's got a lot of good mobility, but the Chiefs like Reader. I just don't think that they want to go away from him in any like direct fashion, so I don't think that that's somebody that they're going to look real hard at. So I'm going to go with Hunt. I know you guys probably wanted Jordan Elliott, but I think right now with the re-signing of Mike Pinnell, I think they're in good shape here. And again, remember, we're in this situation now where Chris Jones is still on the roster. So I think spending a, a high pick like this, a 69 on a defensive lineman, I don't think that's the best way to help the roster. I think you have to go uh, interior lineman here is the best value. So we're going to take Hunt, and we're going to roll with it and see what happens down the line. Um, Peoples-Jones is a really interesting wide receiver that we could have considered. Uh, big guy, very explosive, could have uh, helped in the pass game. And I do think that they want to get – Patrick Mahomes another target. So I think that's well within the realm of possibility. Strobridge goes here, a player that I like. Amik Robertson is a, a corner that I like that I think could play the nickel for the Chiefs. Um, that allows Fenton to go out wide, and I think that's interesting. And now a strange third-round trade option here. Uh, we are at 32, the last pick in the third round. We have... The Packers want to send us a slew to jump back an entire round. We're not going to do that. We want a top 100 pick no matter what. The interesting thing here, same thing with the Eagles. So we're going to decline these because we're not in the business of moving out of the third round and the top 100. We're just going to decline all of these. And again, we're looking at CB, linebacker, guard for Hunt, Harrison, and Terrell. So we have three picks left. We're going to get to the bottom here pretty quick. And then we'll go from there. So whatever we do with this last pick in the top 100 is going to be a guy that we want to get onto the field, a guy that we feel can make a difference. And as we look down here, we're going to look at Cam Akers again, uh, another running back that I think you guys are going to dig. That's a tempting offer right there. Jeremy Chin is a big, elusive, hard-hitting, Played at a lower level of competition in Southern Illinois, but I think he's a safety that can make a difference, and I like where he's coming from. Uh, we address linebacker, but Akeem Davis-Gaither is an interesting, more of a cover guy, so that could be an option there too. If we they got to this scenario, they could like that. I like Gamford and Jennings on the, the edge. I like Lecky Fotu inside. The Chiefs really like Antonio Gandy-Golden. He is more of a, a possession guy. He wins with his change of direction rather than his long speed. It's a little over the top for me there. I just don't know if he'll be there when they get back. So I'm going to take the safe pick. I, I think I'm going to make you guys happy when I do this. We're, we're going to give them Cam Akers, uh, the running back from Florida State, and add a little bit more pep to that offensive backfield, see what it can do for helping Patrick Mahomes in a campaign that I think he's going to need uh, different weapons, not necessarily – that's more of the same. Right now, Sammy Watkins is still on the roster as well. And so as we, we saw what happened after our pick, Gandy Golden went right after that. Uh, K.J. Hill, Jennings went, Van Jefferson, he's an interesting choice as well. Uh, Raekwon, and then Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. So we come into the next round, and it's pretty much – Right now, developmental guys, whoever we think might be able to grow into something. We're talking 4-32. and 32. Is it worth moving back uh, 10 picks to get an additional fifth round? 
that would give us three in the fifth round by moving out of this last pick of the fourth. I'm not so sure about Carolina wants to do another trade. I don't think I, that they want to do that. The uh, the fifth round and a sixth that doesn't really work for me. Although it's not terribly far from from where uh, the San Francisco pick is. So I'm a little bit torn. I don't see a pressing need right now. So I'm going to go for the two fives, and we're going to try to wrap this up uh, in the fifth round for the Chiefs. So we have 10, 30, and 31 back-to-back choices here at the end of the round. And what we're going to see comes off is a lot of linemen. Jacob Phillips, I'm impressed he went that high. Uh, Harrison Bryant, Asiasi. We're starting to get into the tight ends because I think this is where the tight end group's really going to stand out because there, there's not a whole lot of elite tight end play in this class. It's going to be a little bit touch and go about where – they're going to get selected, and I'm not sure there's going to be uh, an over amount of tight ends selected in this draft. So as we watch this tick through, Shane Lemieux goes, uh, another guard option that we had, Jake Breland, Anthony McFarland goes. I know a lot of you have been watching his film and like what you see there. I do as well. Um, and I think this is about the right spot for him, but the Chiefs, we moved out of that pick, and honestly, if we'd had it, uh, we would have had a chance to get it, but... Uh, at that point, that that's the decision you make, right? We had already kind of addressed running back position with Cam Akers, so I, I don't think that it was a priority. Um, you guys might end up liking that pick better. We'll see what comes of it. And as it loads here for the next round, it leaves us, again, 10, 30, and 31 in the, in the fifth. So we're going to have a busy round here. We're going to let it get started. And as it rolls, we see Trey Adams goes. I don't think that actually happens. Juwan Jennings, Colby Parkinson is a tight end that's worth noting. I think he's kind of a move guy that isn't overly athletic, but I think is somebody that could really uh, give a spark to a team if it fits correctly. And so now we get down to it. What have we done to this point? Cornerback, linebacker, guard, and running back. Is there a defensive player that, uh, that stands out on this list? There really isn't. Antoine Brooks is an interesting name. I'm not sure that he lives up to the name itself. Uh, Evan Weaver's down here. Not a whole lot of cornerback depth. We really ought to be looking for a second corner, and I don't think that there's anybody that really stands out in here. If I select it, let's take a look at who's – Lavert Hill's still in there. Um, I think Bassey's still in there. He's a good athlete. I'm not sure that he's ready to make an impact. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity later in the round to take a look at those guys, though. So what stands out to me here is – we have a chance, looking at this group, to, to add somebody to help spell Dion Yelder. And I think Thaddeus Moss is a guy that's been coming on as he gets older. He's Randy Moss's kid, so he, I think the dedication to how to be an NFL player, I think, is, is there. Uh, would like to have a little more athletic upside, but we're going to grab him here and see if he can develop for us, see what he can bring to the table once he gets into training camp and onto the team, which would be my guess. I would project that currently. So as it ticks down here, Gibson goes, Degora goes, uh, again, more tight end talent handing off here. And then we get to our pick, and we're at 30. We have back-to-back picks right here, so we can do pretty much anything that we want. Um, Gibson's an interesting guy. Quez Watkins, I think a lot of people like. We're going to have to add one of these corners, and I think it comes down to Levert Hill or Stanford Samuels, and I'm not sure... They're very, very close on what I've seen from both of them to this point. So I think at the end of the day, that's kind of a toss-up. So I think where we're going to go is Hill. I think he can do a, a little bit more of what Spags wants to do. And then we're going to give ourselves another option here. And again, we're going to build on the other side because we don't see a lot of defensive talent here. We could take another corner, but I think that's a bit of overkill. None of my kind of sleeper guys are still available at this point. So we're not going to dig too much deeper. And uh, Kaliki Hudson is, is a name to remember, by the way. Um, I'm not sure I'd list him at a safety. I don't know what teams are going to do with him. But I think um, another guy right now with Sammy and Chris Jones on the roster, it leaves you looking for who has upside, who can do something that you don't necessarily know that they're going to pan out or that they you have to bank on or anything like that. So uh, I think I'm going to add to the offensive line and kind of help that out. And Jake Hansen is a guy that I think can help uh, that might be an upgrade over Reader. Not drastic one, but I think we'll, we'll come in there 
and give them some decent options at the depth on the interior defensive line. So, as we review, got Thaddeus Moss, got Lavert Hill, and took Jake Hansen to try and bring up that offensive line's uh, bottom number. And that is our last pick, unless we get offered something here, and I don't anticipate that. So let me know what you think of this draft. I thought it was an interesting scenario, maybe not exactly what's going to happen. I guess we're just going to have to keep doing these. Uh, as mock drafts get closer and closer to the real thing, and the, the NFL draft is still on schedule as we speak. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun time, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought of it, what picks you would have made, what things you would have changed. Uh, make sure if you're not subbed yet, hit the sub and that bell notification so you know when something comes out. You might have to click it down to all on mobile. Uh, but leave a note with what you think in the comments and leave a thumbs up if you like this one. Appreciate you guys watching this and these other ones as they pop up. And I'll check back with you. Have another video this week. And uh, thanks for watching today. I'll check you next time.